Hi everyone, here's the Bookemics once again and today I'm reviewing Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell, a book which I'm sure it's going to be tough for me to convey how much I love this book. That, my friends, was what the cool kids call an anacoluthon uh, for the connoisseurs out there. Quelli che muoiono, bisogna pregare il Dio perché vadano in paradiso. I wish I could ascribe it to my O at Cloud Atlas, but it probably came from my uh, ignorance and awkwardness. I've had this book on my shelf for a very long time, but the point is that I am a big fan of the movie Cloud Atlas, the movie adaptation, uh, and I'm going to talk about that adaptation toward the end of my review. Uh, the point is, I love that movie. I watched it in theaters when it came out. It's one of my favorite movies from last years, and I heard from countless people that the book was so much better and that the book was a completely different thing and such, and I somehow was convinced that the movie had spoiled the best part of the book to me, uh, and also some, uh, some ex experiences with uh, the occasional short story by David Mitchell had convinced me he was kind of a tough writer, uh, as in tough to understand, requiring a lot of effort, difficult sort of guy. Um, and other people uh, had mentioned Cloud Atlas as being a very challenging book, and by all means some parts of it are, some parts of it require you to do your homework and to invest a certain effort in order to be understood. Actually, all of it does that. All of it has that type of challenge to it. What you should not absolutely believe, though, is that this is a difficult book, as in weighed down by hefty topics, or uh, steeped deep in its philosophy, or in its beliefs, or challenging on the level of lexicon. I mean, it is all of those things, but still, for some kind of magical formula Mitchell managed to nail when he was writing this thing, it flows simply beautifully and I couldn't really put it down and I only really stopped when I reached one of the 12, no, 11 sections in the book because I, it was just so plain awesome I couldn't stop halfway through any of its six different narrative strands and on a, level, on a certain level, this is very much the book for me. I am a sucker for genre fiction of all sorts, and for fiction that involves a certain type of excitement as far as the plot is concerned, and this is definitely a book like that. This is a book... The one thing I, I want you to understand, if you're going to take away one thing from this review, is that Cloud Atlas is genius as far as its plot is concerned. Each of the plots of the many different narrative strands that are intertwined in the course of the book is simply too good to be true. It's just original and innovating and it's absolutely, it follows absolutely in the standards of a specific genre. You have a Pacific voyage, you have a thriller, um, industrial espionage type slash military thriller set in the 70s and all of these tales fall very precisely into their genre and at the same time uh, hit you unexpectedly with, uh, with a certain twist or with a very quick shift in the way you perceive a character or or maybe you were you was thi you, you were thinking something was going to happen but then Mitchell manages to surprise you with some kind of double twist and it's just so unexpected this was so unbelievably good on the level of plot and possibly because of that, possibly because the events in this book are so interesting and fascinating and the characters are so compelling and so interesting and some of them are really awful, some of them are truly despicable, some of them are actually great people, but all of them are fascinating and you want to learn more about them and you want to know them more deeply, possibly because of this, all of the heavier stuff, the fact that you have up to a certain point to decode the language in each of, it, of these sections, to learn how to speak this different narratives language, the fact that the themes of this book concerning the inherent evil of corporational economics and of capitalism up to a point, or at least of a vision of capitalism as a form of social Darwinism, a vision of the world in general where it is uh, you know, the, the, the strong have a certain right to prey on the weak, all of that is bound to doom humanity towards self-destruction, all of these are hefty themes and Cloud Atlas can be truly disturbing at times. Some scenes in Cloud Atlas involve brutal violence and unspeakable things you'll have to read by yourself, 
but at the same time these the, the even more disturbing are these threats these thoughts you see waved throughout history uh, the genius thing about this book and notice i'm not really telling you much about how the about all these different strands where they're set what they are about because i think if you haven't watched the movie and you're going to experience this thing vanilla knowing nothing about it by all means you're going to have a hell of a great time jumping from one section to the next what i want to say is that the book is very good at showing how certain types of thoughts certain types of ideas and visions of the world move throughout one historical moment to the next and under certain contexts can become truly appalling or otherwise can move people to the greatest of acts and to help their fellow women and men the structure of a cloud atlas I I'm going to spoil you this it's a structure that starts from the past uh, these narrative strands I mentioned these storylines are all set in very different periods in time they start with the past they start with the 19th century and they end all the way in the far future and then come back all the way to the 19th century what this achieves on the one hand is to show you the inevitability of certain forms of evil throughout history on the other hand first they show you the beauty of the world you live in and of the world uh, of, of planet Earth, really, the natural beauty of this world, the beauties of civilization, the beauties of all the, that progress and that has achieved, that, you know, the beauties of the world we live in, the fact that you can walk down the street relatively safe, that people have been convinced with a certain effort of the value of certain ideals, of the importance of shedding certain types of hatred and ignorance, and at the same time it shows you how temporary all of that is, how easily it can, it can be taken away if people are not vigilant and if once more the, 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 the strong is allowed to prey on the weak because uh, once more power tends to justify itself and to exploit the weak uh, by convincing them they are not even exploited in, exploited in the first place and by all means do not make the mistake of thinking Cloud Atlas is a sort, sort of political manual that it has any type of political agenda far from it the, the thing it does is complicate all of these issues a review like mine is bound to make this sound this, this stuff sound as if it's easy as if the book gives you the solution on how to be a good human being but that's difficult shit and it will point at certain types of perversion and evil and at certain types of good but the book itself is very aware that all of those things are not easy to achieve are actually and that evil is strong and corrupts people very easily because that is the way of things and at the same time by showing you how easy it is for the world to slip into corruption and then taking it all back and then moving for be moving past to the present day and then to the past back to the 19th century it makes you feel like giving like doing something to change the world to improve the world even just filming a fucking review on youtube to tell people hey cloud atlas is a very good book you should read it because you'll have a great time i'm not i'm not saying this is going to turn you into any kind of i don't know missionary also because missionaries are shown in the book as largely awful people a note i'm sure mr mitchell doesn't think missionaries are, are horrible people. I'm thinking of the historical figure of the missionary as oftentimes being a sort of servant for other imperialistic pursuits, end of note. But it just makes you feel lucky to be alive and lucky to share in all of the wealth of the world, even while having told you for the 600 pages of how shitty the world and reality are, really are at their core. And this is impossibly, once again, mystical as, as a feat. It, it, this, this book shouldn't work the way it does, and yet it does. Sticking to its formal structure, I am just a sucker for these type of complex structures, for these books where different storylines are intertwined with each other and form a sort of uh, constant and recurring pattern. Valerio Evangelisti, I've talked about him in the past, is an Italian science fiction writer who writes the most splendid books using this type of different storylines, intertwining them with one another, um, giving you alternating chapters following, I don't know, an inquisitor, li uh, inquisitor living in the Middle Ages and then a scientist living in the near future. And it's just a pity that he isn't translated in English because he's a genius writer. If you are Italian, by all means, read Valerio Evangelisti's novels is great. Think of If on a Winter's Night a Traveler by Italo Calvino, 
uh, to think of a similar structure you can read in English. A very, um, a very strict pattern that gives way to the freest of expressions. Just like with certain poets like Yeats or Frost, Robert Frost, who use these very strict uh, rhyming um, and structural conventions and basically show you how free you can be once you use a convention of that type. This book uses genres, uses genres from science fiction to the dystopic novel to adventure fiction to whatever to show you how free you can be once you move inside a convention such as that of a genre. And even just noticing how each of these six different storylines tap into the next and are all interconnected with one another and you find these phrases that are repeated or these images that come from a section to the next and all of these uh, eerie, sinister, sometimes beautiful references, cross-referencing between all of these. If you are that type of reader, if you like to read attentively and you like these type of intricate plots, which means you probably have read some postmodernism. Postmodernist fiction tends to have lots of those in the references and everything is connected in the end, sort of reflections. You're going to have a hell of a, lo of a lovely time with Cloud Atlas, but this, once more, is not at all a book for academics and English literature students. I'm sure my mum would enjoy this book. I'm sure your mum would enjoy the book too. Not that I am implying I am acquainted with your mother. When it comes to its language, Cloud Atlas performs another one of its feats that shouldn't really work but somehow do masterfully, which is that it teaches you how to read it as you move along. Uh, this book is, is written in a variety, once more, of styles and genres and registers, uh, and even in uh, some invented futuristic um, language that is English but at the same time isn't and in that sense it may be a little bit tough to read uh, at first when you first experience one of these storylines but it isn't not nearly as difficult as some other stuff you find around that plays with this same idea uh, for instance I am a fan of the don't collapse too much. I'm a fan of the familiar series by Mark Danielewski, which is written of several different intertwined storylines, each one using a different register and style, uh, but uh, cracking the code in the familiar, while not impossible at all and actually very rewarding, and I'm, I'm saying this as someone who is shit at cracking codes, so if I read this book and this series, you can read it with your eyes closed, or, you know, probably not, but you can uh, easily crack the code. Uh, Cloud Atlas is a breeze in comparison, not because it's not because its code is any less genius, but just because it flows so beautifully and because once again David Mitchell engineered a type of code, a type of linguistic game which is uh, entertaining to decode, it's entertaining to learn the language this story is told through and you're going to learn about these words as you read through. And at the same time it's challenging and it keeps you engaged but it never frustrates you, it never got to the point where I couldn't understand what was going on, never at all. And once more, if I could crack this book, you're going to breeze through it. And please keep in mind that you do not only need to learn how to read the more genre-ish and futuristic uh, storylines in the future, even the one set in our current times, uh, told by an uh, old Englishman, the ghastly ordeal of Timothy Cavendish, you'll need to sort of decode it and to understand his old-school English uh, slang and his uh, ways, peculiar ways of phrasings and all his references to old movies and classic literature. The fun just never stops with Cloud Atlas. The two books I want to compare Cloud Atlas to even more than Danielewski's The Familiar are The Shadow of the Torturer by Gene Wolfe, a classic of science fiction where the genius feat is that it is written in a futuristic language that is filled with obscure lexicon and that as you learn, basically you learn the language of this world and you learn how to build this world, how to create, to, to imagine this world in your mind as you become acquainted with the narrator's language and with this lexicon and with these bizarre terms. Cloud Atlas works in many ways in a similar way, especially in its futuristic storylines, and also to uh, Mason and Dixon by Thomas Pynchon. This is, uh, for obvious reasons, especially true of the first storyline set in the 19th century. Mason and Dixon too is set between the 18th and 19th century, maybe all, all, only in the 18th century. I'll have to check that. But anyway, it is written by Pynchon in a style that imitates the style of classic English writers such as Defoe in order to convey the story 
story of these 18th century explorers and astronomers in as if it were written in the time but of course being written by a postmodern writer writing in the 80s and 90s some say already in the 70s food for thought but anyway um, writing today you can find certain things and certain reflections that maybe clash with what uh, would have been what characters would have thought in a genuine 19th century, 18th century narrative and that is not jarring at all, that is the fun of it. It's the fun of reading a narrative, you know it's fabricated and decoding it and looking at this, at this ancient artifact from yesterday and then reflecting in general on the way history is constructed, on the way if any of the artifacts or genuine artifacts from the past we approach nowadays can be approached as they were created in the past and on all of those reflections on historiography you are probably familiar with if you deal with post dealt with postmodernism at any time in your life but that basically go you know you're only always constructing with the past through your present day perspective but that's complicated stuff the last thing i want to say about this book is uh, the movie the movie adaptation um the movie adaptation of cloud atlas in my opinion is great and it's absolutely fine um, i do not think at all that the movie is so uncomparable to the book uh, of course the book is genius is really um, if i haven't stated this enough it's a masterpiece i, I can't believe that books this good exists but the movie too is great and i still love it and i've watched it several times and i think i'll watch it again in the future and yeah, Yes, sure, they changed some of the plot lines and they uh, simplified maybe a certain ones, they altered one or two of the storylines in significant ways, but this to me seems very much like an, 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 an adaptable kind of book because of the way it's so bound to the language is used to create it and to construct it and the way they adapted it I thought was genius. But let me know what you think about Cloud Atlas the movie, most notably about Cloud Atlas the book in the comments below. I apologize for a review that was even more sprawling than usual and even more <gasps> heavy breathing, like I really like the book, but they really like the book and I'm sure you'll have a lovely time with it. I should stop saying lovely, it's a horrible word. You'll have a fucking great time with motherfucking Cloud Atlas figure. Uh, in a second you're going to find links on the screen to videos I've filmed of Mason and Dixon probably and also Shadow of the Torturer. And I will see you in the next review. Thank you for watching guys. Bye guys.